and welcome to Gladiator Miniatures and Fighting Fifteens. Uh, this is another instructional video on mould making and this time I'm going to look at high build moulds. Now a high build mould, and this is one of them, I've got it just in front of the camera there, is one where you've actually built up the mould to cope with a particular characteristic of the miniature. So here on these 40mm uh, hoplites, um, the neck cavity, I've built up the rubber so that there's a solid plug that goes into the cavity. Um, if I didn't do that, the plug would get divided in two by the mould halves and that would create a far frailer plug. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing this mould is because the original mould made by Flashing Blade has lost all its ne neck plugs because they've all torn and I've had to drill them out to send figures out. So at long last, I've actually got round to sorting this out. Now this is a mold I did yesterday, and this is for the uh, spear version of this particular pose. I just didn't have room on the mold for all the sword arms, so what I'm going to do is make another mold for this basic body pose of advancing, or, um, or attacking really. Um, and thrusting uh, a spear or uh, attacking a sword over the head or sort of mid mid height uh, the action poses and and really these things sort of existed in the old flashing blade catalogue but the moulds are labelled so badly if you're listening Mark Rizal, uh my dear friend <laughs> um, but it was difficult knowing what you were actually dealing with so hell is other people's moulds and other people's catalogues and listings uh, no doubt someone will worry about my insane uh, cataloging at some point later um, so what we're going to do today is make a similar mold to this but we won't have spears um, it will just have sword arms and if you see here on the spears there's a spear arm attached to a spear this is for a low held spear again I've used um, a built up bit of silicon to cope with the fact the arm goes into the mould and back out again and I didn't want the arm having silicon folding over it and and sort of making it hard to remove from the mould. So this is another reason. Um, ease of moving um, parts out of the mould when you've cast them and making um, robust parts of the mould so your mould lasts longer. Um, I wish I had it. I've got a chariot mould which involves high build because it's got a whopping great big hole in the side and if you don't high build it with a plug going in one side um, it, virtually, it tears virtually every time you pull a chariot out um, and that's something I've learnt by experience. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a mould and what we have here is a mould can. I've already tamped this, it's like Blue Peter um, it's one I've done earlier, and I've done the paper liner for the inside of the mould. This, as I said before, just helps get the mould out of a can um, because it reduces the amount of suction. If you just put rubber in, the mould can is in perfect condition, nothing wrong with it at all. It's just if you use silicon on bare metal, uh, even tout. Um, it tends to stick and it's difficult to get out. So I'm just going to drop drop the liner in there. Um, again, I always work with my constant X there and my reminder of which way the mould spins and which way I need to point things so that um, metal will flow logically into that part first. Um, okay, so we have the top of the mould, which we lay uh, out the mould top first. Um, so this is a Coca's cream disc. I've already cut uh, out the plug and I'm using the plug here as a guide still to put a compass mark on, on the mould for my positioning line. Now I'm using the old mould as a guide for where the figures were and I'm just going to score a line there 
and then draw it one closer in and then for the channel another one even closer in I'll probably redo these in a minute after I've taken the the backing films off okay so, but basically I kept a plug in I marked it with a cross so I got it roughly central used that for the compass so I could draw that your mold will look neat now uh, you don't have to do it you can just go for ragged hand carved circles uh, with a certain rustic charm um, it's it's fine right even though we're going to do a build high build mold there are two ways um, one which is a dark type of mold I've done here on this half I scooped out after put the figure in and then dropped a ball and I tout and then I put a ball of fresh silicon in there so that's one way to do it or if you look at the other side of it you can try it by not talking that mold half putting your figures in and then building up with silicon to where you want it to be now I think the digging out version works better and is, is has more control because if you try doing the building by actually building it up it tends to compress when you apply all the pressure to the mold so it doesn't quite give you um, the sort of break you want to on the figure um, it's just something you'll learn which way works for you I always find it hair raising because as soon as you do a high build mold you're only talking one mold half uh, because you need the silicon to stick to the other half for all the bits you've built up or dug out. Um, so, what we're going to do, I now take this mould and I'm going to talc it. So I'm going to take off the polythene film. Um, Coca's polythene film is particularly tricky to get off because it sticks around the edges and tears. Um, if you use something like nice and rubber they come with nice solid polythene sheets separating them and they come away beautifully. Um, okay so right the slight pause while I disappear and I'm going to talc, talc this mould. Okay I've tapped the mould and remember on the face and the edges only. You want the other side to stick to the paper as best as good as well as possible, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Um, and just drop that in carefully, being careful not to shift the paper liner. And then take your mushroom, which you've talked, drop it in, give it a good press, and then get your mold studs. So I use so these square or cubic mould studs from Hewitt's um, because they've got holes in each of the side the silicon in the vulcanised process comes through here and locks these studs in. They're very effective at staying in the mould and also because they're square stopping the mould from slipping. So you're going to use 12 of these and again I use the bolt holes as a guide to put in the first three and then roughly opposite to get the next three then I fill in the gaps so you press them down slightly mainly so that the hole is almost covered and so you can get away with fewer studs but this gives a very positive locking mechanism and then I always use a marker a small marker stud uh, so I just bend the claws on so it stays in position when it's mould split and then I put that up at my 12 o'clock position press down 
Okay, so all my moulds are always laid out the same way. So, you know, and I can just see the impression left by the compass. If you can't, pop the mushroom out, pop in your little plug again, and if you just want to reinforce where everything is, because you're old and you can't see, just like me. To help. So the outer one is to position the main figures and the inner two are for the channel that gets cut for the feeds and everything. So that's done so I move that pop out rubber again. Um, you want to keep these. I keep them in a little plastic bag because they haven't got any talc on them and you use that bit of silicon to do all the building. Pop the mushroom back in. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is lay out the mould. So basically, I know where my figures need to be. I think I don't put them down too. Well, don't impress them in too far yet. Just roughly in position. And you see, these figures they got a whole or oh, basically yes. It's a ball and socket joint and the socket in the sides, that's fine. That's not a problem with the mould. It's this one here that's a problem with the mould and that's what the high build's needed for. Okay, I've got three of them. I'm gonna need approximately three shields. I do mine as a all-in-one mould if possible for a code. Um, they don't sell in hundreds, so it's um, just a, convenience to have everything for one figure on one mould. Okay, so that's three scabbards. Uh, and I've got three crests. These are awkward because they're hooked. And so I'm gonna do, they're gonna need feed feed and vent them. Um, I've got four crests to this. This is because there's three different types and I like to have some variety. Um, okay, uh, right, I've got heads. So it's just say roughly positioned at the moment. And I've got shield arms. And then there'll be a little fiddling in a minute when I try to work out how to get all the other arms in. So I've got two types of sword arm. Uh, this is for mid height arm and I've just got to work out the orientation I want those at remembering that everything spins like that so it's a different one that's the big one So I haven't quite got those round yet, so I'm just going to have to do some fiddling. So what I'm going to do is move the crests out. Basically, I'm leaving enough room for things to have vent vents put through and I can probably shields right um, and then it's going to be where I can fit the rest of the arms uh, this one's a tricky one um, I almost feel 
I think it would be better cast from the sword. Except that it goes, see, there's probably parts that go in, so it wants to. It's going to have to feed into the middle of the arm. Right, yeah, let's jiggle that. Again, these arms, because they're crooked, I'm going to use a high build technique on them. Right. I'm going to move the heads out. Pull, um, put them on a sprue if I can. Let's go. Let's get the arms in. See, if I planned this ahead, we wouldn't have this debacle, would we? Uh, I might split the heads up because there's space elsewhere. So one in there. One in there, and if I just move the shields, I should get Reaper one in there. Right, so remember this mould's been talked so far. I'm just going to give those shields a bit more space, and I'm going to lightly press everything down. Now I'm happy approximately with where everything is. Including the figures. By the way, I don't recommend doing this when the temperature is so high outside. See, I've got, I did four, I've got another body as well, but I was being optimistic, but I don't think four is possible on this mould. It's got enough in there. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the figures out. The rest of the things can stay in position. And I'll remember which one I've taken out of where. What I'm going to do now is scoop out some silicon from around the neck area. And what I'm going to do, use to do that is a liner cutter with a, this is a number 10 curved blade in it. And I'm just going to roughly scoop out each neck. So this is digging out, and of course, this will create a corresponding high build. Okay, right. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just disappear for a second. Get my right. This is how I dust. This is a muslin cloth with talc in it. I'm now going to very carefully dust those cavities and I'm just going to make sure this half is lightly talked because I say the other half isn't going to have any silicon sticking to it. Right, having done that, I'm now going to wash my hands. This is because they're covered in talc and I'm going to handle silicon but I don't want any talc on. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've washed my hands. Uh, so I'm talc free and what I'm going to do now is let my hands dry properly because I don't want any moisture um, But anyway, what we're going to do now is just stick The figures back in their holes And I hope you can see that at the neck there's that sort of dip where I've taken out the silicon that was there um, I'm just going to press these arms down. These arms, because they're crooked, are going to get silicon surrounding them, if I'm not careful. So these ones in particular, I'm going to do something about. And so, right, hands feel dry now. So this, taking this wadge of silicon I cut out, I'm going to scoop 
an amount out, roll it into a ball, and then I'm just going to position it in there so it fill goes into that hole. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to gauge the amount. If you muck it up, you've got plenty of central reserve of silicon left from a ball like that. So the idea is that this ball of silicon covers the neck cavity completely on this figure and so that when it's in the vulcanized iron under pressure it's that ball of silicon that gets forced into the cavity not rubber from the half of the mold it's underneath and that will ensure that this will stick to the untaut top half in a minute so we're just going to create some balls to go in there you just have to press them down lightly And that's just so that that arm is going to be easier to get out. Well, we hope it is. It's always possible that you'll create more, more problems <laughs> doing this and you'll solve. But yeah, so it just rests. If you find a ball sticks to your fingers, you get talc all over it, get rid of it, do another one. Um, and there you are. So the mould is all laid out ready for the top half so I'll just put this temporarily over them there to sh show what I'm doing next so okay so we take the the next disc out I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna leave the separator on the face, face of a mould, so this is one with the sharpest edge, and the one with the most curved edge, I am going to peel off. Hopefully going to peel it off. Can't see what I'm doing there. Never goes well when you're trying to demonstrate it. hate your coca really for those uh, then what I'm going to do I'm going to take a steel ruler and create a vent line and another one there this is to help let air escape from the mold can um, just give that a little tap with a wrong implement in the center uh, Make sure it's fully depressed in the centre. And then I'm going to cut out a nick. This is for the basically for the air to escape into. Sorry, if you've got a really tight fit on the mould can, then you can end up trapping air and your mould won't form perfectly. And I'm going to go away and talc this. Okay. All right, we're back. What I've done is I've tapped the bottom of the can, i.e. the top of the can in this instance, but it's the bottom of the mould of the can. Um, I've tapped that side and then I'm going to remove this, this protective layer here. Now I don't want to tap this side because I want it to stick to the little balls of silicon that I've placed there that would make this a high build. So going to position it carefully and press down silicon moulds so much easier to lay out than black rubber because this is soft and easy to use just press down okay. and then Take your can, top, line it up. Say, so I've got little X's to show me where I do it every time. This is so the moulds, in theory, are laid out the same way, I have the same conditions. This bit always goes into the vulcanizer first, so that all my moulds should have the same profile for um, 
for vulcanization. So if it is a slight slant on them, in theory, it'll all go the same way. And because I always cut the notch in the mold there, I always line it up in the casting machine the same way, like any obsessive compulsive would. Welcome to my world. Um, so this is now going to go into a vulcanizer and we'll see it again in just over five hours time. Thank you very much. This is a mold I laid out earlier. Um, it's the next day and it cured in five hours. I let it cool down and I only cut it this morning. But I just wanted to show you the effect of the high build. Now remember that I basically made little impressions in the mould or gouged out chunks of it and you can see there's a big hollow there and again on those arms I did um, and you can see obviously I've cut the mould I didn't didn't feel you needed to see that as there's already a video on cutting moulds on my channel um, so on the other half of the mould you can see the raised area with the lugs for the to create the neck cavity and an arm cavity and on the arms you can see it's raised and the arm is crooked so actually it now splits halfway across the arm approximately rather than having rubber overlap it. Um, and that's it, that, so that should make the arm easy to get out and it's made it easier to see how to uh, create the feeds and a vent um, and we'll see how this runs um, later but in theory it should all work. I tend to vent quite heavily normally because I'm doing 15mm but this is a 40mm mould. And that's it for this video, um, you've seen how I've made the of the high build areas by gouging out and replacing with a little ball of silicon. How carefully you have to talc to make sure that this bit sticks solidly to this side and doesn't stick to the other and so you can actually get your mould apart afterwards. And I'll be back again so shortly with another instructional video for you.